Hey guys, Daniel here and welcome back to the Finance Channel. Here today we're going to be going through a few things. One, what's happened in the market? It's been crazy over the past couple weeks here, just giving an update, my opinion on what's happening. Two, we're also going to look at bond prices and how they're affecting the stock market. Not really in depth, but just giving you guys a kind of a realization and idea of how they correlate to each other. And thirdly, we're going to go through some of my positions and how I'm positioning myself to be successful in the stock market, not just over the next kind of few months here, but also over the long term, over the next few years, regardless of what happens in the economy. So the Nasdaq, man, has taken a nosedive over the past couple of weeks, ever since bond prices have started to jump. You know, the Nasdaq was just at 14,000, over 14,000 just a couple weeks ago. And here today, it bottomed out at around that 12,500 level. So a pretty significant drop in the Nasdaq, around 10%, something like that at this point. You know, today was a crazy day. We went from like negative 2% on the Nasdaq to up 1.5%. We'll see what happens in the coming week, but we got to stay prepared. And in this video, I'm going to go through what I'm doing. So before we get into any of that, I just want to give a general kind of overview of what's been happening and why the market has been dropping. I'm sure everyone has heard about bond prices and bond prices rising and how that is causing the stock market to essentially collapse. Now, I feel like everyone understands this, understands the correlation between the two, but I really want to kind of emphasize and give an example as to how bond prices are affecting the stock market and why they are in the first place. So what is a bond? A bond is essentially debt that is given out by the U.S. government, so essentially risk-free. Who is the main buyer of bonds other than the Fed? Hedge funds, banks, etc. Hedge funds aren't chasing massive returns. You know, they're, they're looking for a couple percent here and there, not the 15, 20, 30 percent returns we're looking here on this channel, uh, but kind of the lower end when we come or when we look at rather uh, returns. So they see bond prices rise. What do they see in the rise? A higher guaranteed return. You know, just six months ago, just six, you know, maybe a year ago, let's go back a year, we can see that bond prices were right around 0.5%, which is just incredibly low, the lowest it's ever been. And bond prices have been rising over the past couple months here and have really started to skyrocket over the past couple of weeks here. So, what are hedge funds seeing? They're saying, oh, we can earn around four, five, maybe 6% on the SP 500 but carrying that risk that we might see a correction or a crash. Or we can go over here to this bond and get a 1.6% return guaranteed and don't have to do anything else. So the higher the bond price goes, the more guaranteed percent the hedge funds and the banks get on their investment. So, you know, if we see treasuries go up to 1.6%, 1.7%, 1.8%, more and more hedge funds are going to find bonds more appealing than stocks. They're going to exit their positions in stocks, causing stocks to, you know, continue on this, maybe this downtrend and transition into bonds. Now, is this going to happen? Who knows? But that is the main catalyst behind this market crash or correction, whatever you want to call it. And as uh, you know, the more we see bond prices rise, the more pain we will see in the market. Now, all of this is based around the fact that inflation is probably going to come within the time between March and April, since we're comparing data or rather inflation data from last March and last April and last May, when the economy was down the toilet, everyone was locked inside, velocity of money was just shut off, and inflation was at an all time low. So when you would compare inflation at such low levels to, you know, inflation at kind of not high levels, but kind of like stable levels or low levels. Now you're going to see a much higher kind of percentage. And that's why the federal uh, chairman or federal reserve chairman Jerome Powell recently said that he expects short term inflation to come because of that comparison in the data. But he expects that to kind of calm down within the back half of the year. And you know, we're going to see very low interest rates and bond prices over kind of like the next few years here as the economy continues to uh, kind of get back on track. So that's what's happening with the stock market. I'm going to go through my three biggest positions now with you guys here today. And my number one is Voyager Digital, ticker symbol VYGBF. Now this stock makes up just under 30% of my portfolio, and it is essentially a cryptocurrency trading platform. Now, this is quite exciting as the fear in the market right now is all around inflation. And what does Voyager Digital benefit from? 
a rise in cryptocurrency prices. And what do we know about Bitcoin and Ethereum? They've all essentially been stable despite the market taking a giant pullback, which is just incredible to hear. And if inflation does come, Bitcoin has been wildly known as essentially a hedge against inflation. So if we do see that inflation, Voyager Digital will actually benefit from that. And if we don't, it's not necessarily going to impact Voyager in a negative way, but rather stay neutral. So it's kind of a win-win situation when it comes to Voyager, and it's why I'm so confident having it at such a high percentage of my portfolio and why I like the stock going forwards. Now, it's not like the stock hasn't taken a dip because of the Nasdaq pullback. I mean, this was like a $21 stock back a couple of weeks or a few days ago after they reported earnings. Now that the market's pulled back, it hit an all time or not an all time low, but a low of under $11 per share here today after rebounding, you know, very volatile stock. And I think this presents, honestly, if I didn't have a position, I'd scale in on these bloody red days. I mean, this was a stock that was down like 25% in early trading here today. And obviously, you know, a giant kind of rebound from the stock price as the day went on. But I like adding Voyager on kind of like the bloody red days. That's how I initially started my position and how I kind of built it. I really like adding on those bloody overreaction days. That's kind of where I like to add Voyager. And, you know, especially in this time in the market, I feel like it's very important to set price targets and stay with that long term mindset. Having that long-term mindset is essential, especially during these kind of market pullbacks or corrections that we're seeing, which is why on my three main positions, I have price targets. And for Voyager Digital, I have, you know, a price target that's kind of one year out. That gives me an idea of the fair valuation of the company just one year out. And in this case, I feel that Voyager Digital is at fair value when it's around $50 to $70 per share at the end of this year based on their incredible growth. Keep in mind, this is a company that went from $3.5 million in monthly revenue back in December to $20 million in monthly revenue just three months later in February. An extremely quickly growing company, and I think they're very well positioned and I'm very confident uh, holding this company through this correction as it essentially benefits them. The catalyst behind this correction benefits Voyager, which is something that I really like to see. Next, the Tattoo Chef. I really love this company. I think they're in a great space. They're in the food industry. Now, what do we know about the food industry? It adjusts with inflation. As inflation happens, food prices tend to go up. So Tattoo Chef isn't really going to be benefited or isn't going to be affected as much from inflation as most companies possibly, right? And they're also in a needs-based business. The food business is some sh something rather that is necessary. Everyone needs to eat food. So even if we do maybe see a slowdown in economic activity, the tattooed chef is going to be there no matter what to sell their products. And people will be there to buy their products all the time, no matter the economic condition. That's one of the real, that's one of the things that I really like about the tattooed chef. The fact that they are just so incredibly resilient to whatever economy they have put in front of them. So uh, my price target for the Tattooed Chef, I went over this in a past video. It's around $75 per share. And I mean, this was a stock that hit like, I think it hit the 17s today. That margin of safety that they have is just incredible and makes me really confident going forwards. So uh, next we have Shift. Now this is a very interesting company. They're involved in kind of like the used car sales business. They have an e-commerce platform that lets you buy and sell used cars. Now, why is this interesting? You know, obviously, as interest rates rise, the price of cars will go up naturally. But if we do end up going into a situation where interest rates are high and the economy takes a bit of a hit, people will not be as willing to spend money on new luxury cars. How does that benefit shift? They sell used cars. So if we do go into a bit of a frugal time, shift will benefit no matter what. I mean, this is a company that I'm expecting to grow revenues like high 10 or like 80, 90 percent over the next five years here, a very quickly growing company. So either way, if we have a normal economy and things get back on track, perfect shift going to do well. If we go through a time more of a frugal time where people aren't spending as much money, great. That's even better for shift. So you can kind of see how my top three positions are all based in a kind of a, a space where no matter what the economic uncertainties are, they're going to do well. If we get inflation, all of these companies will not be affected as severely as others. If we go into a bit of a frugal time where people aren't spending as much money, we're going to you know, not see as much weakness in these stocks as in other stocks. If the market takes a giant pullback, 
It doesn't matter what stock you own. All of them are probably going to go down. Look at March and April. Teladoc, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there were a significant amount of companies that actually benefited from the COVID-19 pandemic that went down back in March. It's kind of interesting how that happens and that disconnect. I think it's a great buying opportunity to buy a stock uh, that benefits from something that's dragging down the market, in this case, interest rates. So uh, yeah, oh, and one, one more thing, uh, we, we have my shift price targets here. Uh, $43.40 is kind of my estimate five years out. I really like this company. I really like all three of these. Together, they make up around 50% of my portfolio. I'm holding a good chunk of cash right now, around 15%, closer to 20%, something around there. Um, I'm, I'm ready to buy the dip if we continue dipping further. I think this is just kind of short-term noise. And again, all of these companies are very resilient, no matter the market condition. So anyways, guys, if you have any opinions on what's happening or on these stocks, please let me know. This was mainly just kind of a video that lets me get my uh, my thoughts out, just speaking out loud and letting you guys know what I'm doing. And, you know, hopefully you guys can benefit from that. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.